Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing a change that we made in our schedule about two thirds of the way through our school year here, if not three quarters of the way through. Uh, I don't typically change our ske schedule whatsoever during the school year. I like to just stick with what's consistent, what we've done for years, but this year lent itself to us making quite a big schedule change in our schedule. And I also wanted to just update you on my theme of the year, which was focusing on atmosphere and giving you just a general idea of where we're at in the school year, what's gone well, what's not gone so well, now that we are done with our second 12 week terms. We do three 12 week terms. We only have one left of this school year. So if you're interested in this video, give it a thumbs up and stick around. Okay, so I'm just gonna jump right into it and tell you about the changes that we made to our schedule. I actually wrote down specifics um, so I can walk you through what our new schedule looks like. Most of it is very similar to the schedule video that I posted at the beginning of the school year, um, but I'm gonna walk you through that daily rhythm nonetheless in case you haven't seen that video. Um, but the big change that I made is that on Fridays we used to do Enrichment Friday. We would do our poetry tea time. We would do our handcraft, our art. We would try to fit in nature study on Fridays. We would do any of those beautiful things um, to end our week well. And what I've changed is making that on Mondays now. There's lots of reasons for that. The main reason is that the Wednesday Bible study that we had been a part of for years and years, we are no longer attending. Um, that's something that we left the end of November um, and the other families of young children left as well. So there is no children's program there right now just because of Zoom and just the complications it was causing for the very young children and the fact that it's going to be that way next year as well. So we all just decided to stick with our um, individual churches and nobody got left behind. Um, so we got our Wednesdays back in our homeschool and it's been a very long time since we've had Wednesdays to do any sort of academic work. And so what I decided to do is make the bulk of our academic days Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and play around with Monday and Friday a little bit. The reason for that is that Mondays, I always need to pick up after the weekend. There's lots to be done on Mondays. There's lots to be reset. It's the start of my work week as well here online and with Usborne. Um, and it's the start of my husband's work week, obviously, as well. Um, and then I wanna always start the kids well with their studies, but they're also kind of getting back into a rhythm after the weekend. Sometimes we're up late on Sundays, etc. So I thought that it would be so nice to start our week, kind of like inaugurate our week in the enriching, beautiful, you know, truthful ideas. So we have now made Mondays our enrichment day. So every other Monday we have our nature study co-op and on those other Mondays, that is now the time that we do our enrichment. So enrichment is handcraft, logic, art, poetry tea time, our nature journaling, etc. cetera. Um, and then on Fridays, we do our history co-op every other week. And then in the in-between weeks now, the kids and I have started going on adventures. So we got a zoo pass again. It's been a long time. Um, we live in a beach town, so we have the beach available. Mostly that space on Friday, I want to just reserve for me to just have fun with the kids, almost like Sarah McKenzie's Just Because You Can days. Uh, I just felt like even the handcrafts and the enrichment days, I wanted to be more of like uh, our hearts, you know, we're in it together, but it's definitely still more me instructing um, than me just enjoying that time with them. And so I thought twice a month to be able to do something really fun, uh, educational still, but also just fun uh, for us would be a great use of that time and that space. Um, and so whether it is going to the zoo or going to the beach or doing some messy science experiments outside or going to our local botanical garden or maybe there's something we've been studying that I know that I can plug it in. On. Sorry, I got a phone call. Um, so as I was saying, I just like to have that space reserved so that I know I can plug in a field trip if the kids are studying something. For example, I've been talking about this for the entire semester, but it's gonna happen. I have a date for it now. Isabella had been learning about Thomas Edison in her own time. The boys and Bella and I learned about Thomas Edison back in October uh, when we were going through that time period in history. And we live in Florida. There is the Edison and Ford Winter Estate. I've wanted to take the kids there for a really long time. We finally got there in our studies and I haven't taken them yet because I can never find the right time in our schedule. So now I know that I have these different 
various, you know, selections of Fridays that I can choose and we can make sure that we get that done. So it's nice to have that space. So sometimes it's used for educational adventures. Sometimes it's just like a hiking adventure or a nature adventure or a fun outdoor, you know, messy play date, something like that. Just, just something adventurous, something fun, something for us to do together and not for me to lead. There's so much value in being led by um, you know different tour guides or just following signs around the zoo. Uh, it's, it, I think it's just important for my kids to see me doing that with them as well. So that has been the biggest change is that Mondays are our enrichment and nature days, Fridays are our history or our adventure days now, and we have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to just be in a good rhythm. If you're new here, I'm a year-round homeschooler, so that's beneficial for me to say because otherwise we couldn't get away with just three academic days during the week, so that's important to say. I did write this down so I can walk you through this very specifically, so here is what our daily rhythm looks like right now in our homeschool. Mondays, we start with morning basket. We have our independent work hours, so I couldn't let them go uh, and only do three days of like math or reading or handwriting. So they do still have math, reading, handwriting. Bella has some middle school stuff to work on during that time. So morning basket, independent hour. And then we have either our enrichment time, which would consist of handcraft, logic, art, poetry, tea time, lunch, nature journaling, anything else that they kind of want to pursue and during that time together, or we go to our nature co-op or we are hosting our nature co-op. Uh, then we just do our contributions. That's something that's done every day, even on the weekends. It's what we call chores in our house. And then we have read aloud time. Now, if it's not a nature day, then the kids and I have more time than ever on Mondays to do a little bit more read aloud time. And our hearts are kind of settled because we've done a more quiet at home kind of a day. So everybody wants to sit down and listen to a book a little bit longer on Mondays. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, our schedule looks the same as I told you at the beginning of the year. We have morning basket and then, or preschool time with Annie, then morning basket. Then we have family subjects, which are like science and history and geography that we do together. Then they go into their independent work hour. Uh, from there, Bella lingers in her independent work time a little bit longer. That's when I'll do five in a row with the boys. Then I alternate who's doing language with me that day. The boys do Spanish, Bella wants to do French, so I oversee her French. Um, and then lunch, contributions, read aloud time, and then they go into quiet time and then they spend a lot of time outside after that. And then Fridays, we don't do morning basket right now on Friday. So Fridays we start with games. It's important for me to have that space. Like we're still gathering around the table. Our rhythm really keeps us together throughout the week. So even though some days we start at the table because we're doing morning basket, some days we start at the table because we're playing games. The important thing is that we're starting at the table. We're you know ready, we've done our morning routines, we're good to go. So we start with that, no basket, we do games, uh, math games, science games, history games, any type of educational game. Obviously, we do some of the Lawrence King, Lawrence King Publishing um, uh, bingo games, because you guys know how much I love that. Then we move from that space right into like a home blessing, um, which is just preparing our home for the weekend. So we put everything away that had been out for school during the week. We make sure everything's tidied up because at that point, we're either going to leave and go do something fun and come home at the end of the day about the same time my husband gets home or we're going to leave and go to history cop which is also fun just a different kind of fun also come home around the same time as sean or we're about to have people over for history so it's important for all of everything to just be put away because there's lots of little ones and so the older ones need to put legos away and things like that so their creations don't get destroyed or popped in somebody's mouth um, so we do that home blessing time. Then we either have history co-op or we go on some kind of an adventure. So I've got the zoo, museums, gardens, messy science day, beach day, etc. cetera. Um, although some days we do leave earlier in the morning to go, especially if we're driving a couple of hours somewhere, but that's pretty rare. Most of the time it's somewhere very local. And so it's the afternoon. I, I like coming home on Fridays around the same time as John. I just feel like that's really fun um, to all be starting the weekend together. So that is the breakdown of what our days look like. Again, I don't like changing our schedule very often during the year. I, I can't think of the last time that I've changed our homeschool schedule during the year, um, but we just kind of fell into this rhythm on our own toward the end of November. Then we kind of stopped and did slow and sacred advent during December. And of course, December is just a weird time anyway. Um, and then we skied 
and then got right back into this new rhythm about four weeks, five weeks ago maybe I wanna say, um, and it had kinda of remained the same since November, so I wanted to share that with you guys. Um, we kinda of have like an early push during the year. We start our school year the first week of July typically, and we pretty much sail through October, a lot of academics, a lot of good structure. Things get a little hairy in the middle of the school year, and then here we are almost in March, and this is where we have almost this additional kind of like academic push. Not necessarily a push by me, but our schedule kind of tends to level out, and we start to be able to pick up the pace a little bit more. Um, and it's been like that for years for us. So even though we only have 12 weeks left, these are a solid 12 weeks. So then, as far as where we're at in our actual school year, it's almost March, like I just said, and you guys are probably thinking that I'm like wrapping up the school year, we're like closing out the books, doing well. I know a lot of people are getting there. This has not been that year for us, and so I just wanted to share openly and tell you guys, like on paper, this has probably been our worst year on paper as far as like getting ahead in actual books. We don't use that many consumable books, um, but if you were measuring our school year by the consumable books, this would probably be one of our worst years on paper. Uh, we had, right now we're doing a lot of orthodontic stuff. Literally three of my kids have been seen by the orthodontist in the last two weeks. Um, and one of my kids is doing dental stuff right now. So I feel like almost every couple days I'm being told where they can fit us in their schedule and I have no say over our schedule in, in that sense right now. So we've got dental stuff, we've had orthodontic stuff going on. We did pause in December this year and we just did the whole month for Slow and Sacred Advent. So again, where I would consider that to have been a ton of school and opportunity and experience on paper, that really hasn't been that much. We had construction go on forever, so it seems back in October, late September, early October one thing after another and we're still actually waiting our windows we paid for them in november and the delay has those being done in may so we still have construction kind of lingering but we did have some construction that kicked us out of our living space for little bits of time here and there over the course of a few weeks so we had that happening uh, John ended up taking over the family business right before we started our school year, or maybe even the first week of our school year. That has been a complete life change, and I don't even know if I'm ready to make a video on that, but our entire world was just like, he was partnered up with um, his dad, but his dad did most of the work. Um, but then this year, uh, they really switched roles, and it just was a very natural progression, but it happened maybe a little faster than I was prepared for, maybe not necessarily for John. Um, it's worked out great. They're both loving doing what they're doing, but it has changed my life, maybe mine more so than John's, um, because I'm not sure where the timing is on things, and I just like to know time. Like, what time are you leaving? What time are you coming home? And it's not, doesn't work like that anymore when you own a business. So that happened. And then my mom, if those of you, I think I might've only shared this on Instagram, but my mom took a big fall um, back in November and she ended up in a rehab center. Then because of COVID, we couldn't see her, but she has dietary restrictions. So we were cooking for her and bringing her food every day to the front desk. And, um, you know, my dad was getting ready to retire. So we we're trying to kind of help get everything all settled in. And then when she came home, she needed help. Um, so my, my brother came in to help and then, you know, we were just available here and there while he was in town. And then when he left, we tried to help. I mean, it was just, there was a lot of like, a lot of change and just circumstances that did not make things very consistent. Although I was glad that we had the flexibility to be there and to be with everyone. Um, she actually still has two surgeries coming up, so you guys can pray for that. But so as far as that goes, um, our lives are not, you know, very, they're not the same still um, because she lives a mile away. John's dad also lives a mile away. Uh, our parents both live in the same neighborhood as us. And so we just like to be available when we can or when they're feeling well, be able to go see them. Um, when they're up for company because my kids used to see them almost every day. Um, and so, and then also we changed churches, which you guys know. And so getting used to that new schedule of like, when is Awana and when is youth group and you know, things like that. John's leading something there one night a week as well. And so it's been um, just a lot of different changes. Nothing that's been like, you know, 
overly dramatic that's changed our lives like in a major way, but just little bits and pieces that all happened around the same time that made me not think of language arts first. You know what I mean? So on paper, um, we are probably still less than at the halfway point and we should be like two thirds of the way through. We also started a, for, with a couple things we didn't finish from last year. So we've done more than like half of a year's worth of work at this point, but we um, had some more, some work from the year prior to catch up on. And like I said though, we still have like the 12 weeks to go and this is about the time where for whatever reason, my kids are just kicking into a great gear and we tend to get a lot of stuff done. So I'm not really concerned, but I also wouldn't be concerned if we didn't finish this year either. So on paper, that's where we're All at. All that being said, this has been our actual best year of homeschooling ever. And you're probably like, wait, how, what are you talking about? But. Just bear with me. Um, at the beginning of the school year, I talked about the one Charlotte Mason uh, idea that I'm really trying to focus on this year. I do that every single year, just work on one area, try to really do it well and master it so that it just becomes a part of our homeschool kind of organically. This year, my idea was to focus on atmosphere. And I thought when I had this idea that we were already going to have such a smooth schedule that focusing on atmosphere was just gonna be so delightful and it was just gonna aid you know what we were already doing i had no idea that focusing my heart on that would be the anchor of our homeschool this year so because my heart was turned toward creating a, an environment that facilitated learning having that um my eyes peeled for opportunities having uh just preparing myself to be in a slower state just physically mentally everything this year um, really lent itself to the pockets of time that we did have to really dive in, being very productive, very beautiful. And in that sense, as far as opportunities, experiences, projects, uh, reading, interests, activities, we've done well over a year worth of school this year. I really can't even... I need to do the planning backwards thing and write it all down before I forget it because we have done so much this year. And if I don't write something down, then we won't have anything to show for it. But it's helped me reconcile the fact that we really have a lot of math and reading to catch up on. So I did write down some of the things that my focus on atmosphere has done for us this year because a lot of you guys asked if I could do an update on atmosphere. So, so if you're not familiar with the Charlotte Mason method, Charlotte Mason talked about education being made up of three parts. It was an atmosphere, a discipline, and a life. And so this year I wanted to focus on atmosphere in general. So just facilitating an environment that, or creating an environment that facilitates learning, but also showing that I'm still learning and just making it more of our heart's desire to be learning across all different locations and times and not just in school, which I was already hoping that we were kind of doing, um, but I really wanted to just be more focused on it. You guys know when you homeschool, you're always learning no matter where you are, but I did seek out other opportunities. So I wrote these things down because I didn't want to forget. I'm sorry to be reading off of a piece of paper, but um, so I said, let's see here. Yeah, we've definitely done more than a year's worth of work this year. We're going to be able to stop this summer because of you know, just how I feel like our educational experience was uh, all year long, no matter where we were or what time of the year it was, but we do need to do a little bit of math and reading throughout the summer. So the atmosphere focus, despite the chaos that I told you guys that we had going on this year, um, we did slow and sacred advent. That was absolutely beautiful. We probably we probably did more in December than we usually would have done. We probably had a much stronger December as far as our homeschool goes just because of that. Um, but again, it's not a lot written down to show, so I need to go back through, look at pictures and things like that. Um, I changed all the lighting in our house to be Edison bulbs and soft like amber lighting, which has hindered me a little bit with work because the lighting's pretty bad for filming. Um, but it's been like the best move because it has promoted such a like physically peaceful environment. The kids have read more, the kids have played together more. Um, things have just seemed softer in our house just because of that, which I know sounds crazy, but it's really true. It helped so much. Um, 
I also like to play hymns or Disney peaceful piano or something during the day in the mornings or during quiet time or during quiet reading time just to aid the environment that much more. So that's helped a ton. Our nature study. We have been much more in depth with nature study this year. I've made sure to make space in our schedule for a couple of full days of nature study every month, which has been amazing. The kids have done so much more this year. And the only thing I had to do to help with that atmosphere was make the time in our schedule for it. I did not have to come up with amazing concepts. Um, slowing my heart down was a big thing. Um, intentionally displaying puzzles and games and books. I cannot tell you how much more often the kids have picked up a book and asked me to read it to them or picked up a puzzle. Even my boys have sat on my lap this year more than they probably have in the last couple of years, which has been so precious to me um, just because you know, they want to read a book or things are just kind of more calm or because I've calmed myself down a little more than I typically would during the day, you know, just intentionally setting that boundary for myself of sitting down and picking up a book myself. And then the kids will pick up a book and sit down too, which has been amazing. Um, saying no to too many commitments and focusing on the health of our household and the visuals in our house that just create a peaceful atmosphere. So not having a sink that's completely piled up and stuff all over the place and um, you know lights on all over the place, that's a big one for me. Um, one big change that has been really interesting is I pushed our dinner to later and that has changed the feel of our afternoons. So our dinner, we used to have like right at 5.30. I pushed it all the way back to seven because with John's schedule, we don't have to be so rushed anymore. And that has been the most unique change. Like I never would have expected it to make such a difference, but the kids are not rushed, you know, with karate or dance. Um, they're not rushed around. They don't miss dinner with us if they have an activity that night. They're able to go outside, find something, nature journal it, um, start an art project and continue it because we're not finishing school and, and chores and quiet time at two and then dad's home and then we're like i'm trying to make dinner right away nobody really had a break in between um that's been amazing it's been really really great just to give them time to pursue their interests and they are pursuing them on their own i'm not having to facilitate that giving them that space and time and maybe some available resources helps them so much they're flying on their own uh tons more independent reading making their kiwi crates available. Eli is just loving those so much right now. It's insane. He's loving them so much. If I can find a discount code, I'll link it down below. I'm a Kiwi Co affiliate, but I buy them on my own every month. They don't send them to me. And the boys have been doing those during quiet time, Kiwi Crate and um, Tinker Crate. I'm amazed with what they're learning. They're actually reading the magazines, doing all the projects. That's been so great. And I never made time for that before. Um, and they're doing a great job with that. Jesse's been making restaurants and making menus and serving his siblings and they're having so much fun doing that. He, I've kept some of his menus because they're so organized and it's kind of giving me a little peek into um, his little brain a little bit more. His handwriting's great, it's a great opportunity for handwriting. His math skills, he's doing a good job. I'm about to tell him to start adding tax, <laughs> see if he can do it, uh, but that's been great. I've just been more aware of opportunities um, for space uh, and space for passions to grow, which is what I'm saying, like with dinner or just, you know, slowing our weekends down. A couple of the kids have gone to work with John a few times, which has been really unique because we have that space in our schedule now. Um, they have really worked on life skills this year. Yes, not just handcrafts. I've always given more to handcrafts than life skills. So pleased that they are working on some of the cooking, some of the um, household life skills, like doing their own laundry, separating it out, knowing what to do. Um, that's been a huge help to me and it's been really good for them. They're very proud of it. Uh, my kids are serving at church now, which we never would have had time for before. And that's been a really sweet thing just to see that their desire for that grow as they serve, but also how proud they are of having that responsibility, handling that responsibility well, and it being with another uh, an, another person in charge than me, you know, they're, they're very proud of that. Um, I made the time to join a school a group, which is really inspiring me. That's been amazing too. I get to go once a month and chat with some girlfriends, some I know, some I, some I just met. I uh, will have coffee and, or tea and sit together and just share some of the things, the beautiful and true things that we're 
learning. So it might be a passage from their Bible study, or it might be a piece of art or a song by a composer or a poem. Um, but that's been great when we decided to not all study the same thing, but to all just bring something to the table, just to encourage us to be pursuing this at home. That's been amazing. And that has really brought a new life to the atmosphere of our home because I'm bringing more stuff in. I'm learning more. There, there's more that I'm aware of. That's been great too. And then we've been doing Talkumentary Tuesday where we do tacos and documentary on Tuesday nights while John is teaching something at church. Um, we're watching a documentary. So it's just like these parameters, these boundaries that were set of a school day. Now we're doing things in the evenings and I'm seeing how serving on Sundays is helping my kids and it's you know helping them pursue these other interests and they're joining these teams at church or they're having more time to pursue their getting their next belt in karate or leveling up in dance or um you know we're watching documentaries about things and then it's spilling over into their school day or when we're driving somewhere on a trip being able to stop and go to a different museum or just seeking out other opportunities it's just been really great you know just even things that i wouldn't consider to have been educational um like for example going to we, we went skiing earlier this year but we were able to go to a really unique museum on our way there that we found and just have some different educational experiences while we were there, some different nature journaling, and even just the ski school, seeing that as an opportunity, an educational opportunity, having them write things about it, having them do narrations about things that they're seeing, just kind of turning my heart toward education being an atmosphere, mostly at home, but also wherever we are. So. That's my mid-year school, mid three quarters of the way through school year update, term two school year update, um, and our new schedule. Sorry it was kind of rambly, but I just wanted to kind of chat with you guys, friend, friend, and tell you how our year is going. So let me know in the comments down below how your year is going, if you guys have stuck with your schedule, if things have changed, um, if you've had things kind of uproot, uproot you in the middle of the year like we did, and how you handled that. And I will see you guys soon. Bye, guys.